Hello everybody. So what you see here is a regular cylindrical magnet underneath a color gradient magnetic viewing film that is surrounded by an LED strip. And if you have seen a ferrocell before, this image probably is quite familiar to you. You can see these white lines that appear and also if I turn it around on this side you can see this nice spirograph pattern that appears. And also if I just rotate the magnet underneath a bit you can see that you get a really good holographic view of the field itself. And some people have asked me why I don't use a ferrocell in my videos. It is because I think with this field viewer combined with the LED strip around it, it is basically the same image that you get with a ferrocell. You can build a ferrocell much more sensitive, of course, so it will show a further range of the magnet compared to this one. But overall, it is the same operation principle. We have a film with a, yeah, a liquid be between two layers of plastic and it is surrounded by an LED strip that creates individual light spots that create these individual lights. And to show you that, I will just take this magnet underneath here. Right now you can see an even spaced um, spirograph pattern but as soon as I go out further to the edge you can see the number of lines decrease and this is because I'm getting closer to just um, a few of the LEDs on the edge here. And as soon as I get further in you will see the number of lines increase and they are more evenly lit compared to when I go out to the edge and this goes anywhere. I will later show you what it looks like with just one single light source compared to multiple light sources that we have here. So I will just quickly show you the viewer itself. As you can see we have this magnetic viewing film that is taped on a sheet of acrylic plastic, just a 2 mm thin sheet. This is just for stability, it's not needed. And around here I've got an LED strip that is battery powered. So to better show you the field itself, I will take a bigger magnet. It's still in its in original packaging, but it doesn't matter. This is a huge neodymium disc magnet. And if I place it underneath here, you can see the holographic effect from the field viewer really nicely, especially if I rotate it. The magnet is a bit too big for this kind of field viewer, but nonetheless, you sh if I just rotate it like this, get the angles right, you should see what I mean like yeah a really deep hologram that you can see so you can still see this spirograph pattern but of course with just a large magnet it's really big and if I tilt it to the side it's the magnet like this on the side you can see the center, these white lines that where no magnetism is, that divide the two poles. And if I rotate it again, you can see again the spirograph pattern. So now I will show you just on my phone. This is a regular image from a ferrocell. This is just a magnet viewed from the side. And right here, this is another image from a ferrocell. 
This is the spirograph pattern viewed from above. And again, I will just show you for comparison the image from the side. And as you can see, we get almost the exact same image with all these lines in the center and around it that form the exact same pattern. And if you view it from the top, we get the exact same spirograph pattern. With a slightly larger magnet, you would see this even better. So, this is just a small comparison. What I'm going to show you now is a different array that was requested to show underneath this viewing film. It is this um, bowl-shaped magnet array that I showed in an earlier video. And now I will, sh I will show you what this looks like with the lights on. And as you can see, we also get this holographic depth that you see here. If I just rotate it around like this. And with this color gradient magnetic viewing film, you have probably noticed the different colors that appear on the film. And the darker the color, the stronger the magnetic field and the lighter the color, the weaker. So a big advantage of this film compared to the ferrocell is that you actually see the different field pressures in the field. So you see where we have a high magnetic flux density and a low magnetic flux density. As you can see on the corners, for example, we have here like a rainbow, red, and then green, and then it goes to blue, and then to black. So this is just to see where the, the field strength is the highest and the lowest. Also, if I remove the magnet, you will see the color changes. When I get closer, the field strength gets higher, and therefore also the color changes. So now I will tilt it to the side, like this. And now I flip it to this side, just like this, and there you can see the individual magnets, if I rotate it like this, and just the top pole. And from here, because it is a very small area, it looks like this would be one wide continuous ring. But if you can look very closely, you can see that it consists of many white lines and also makes the spirograph pattern. And this becomes more clear if I move it down to the outer edge where only two or three LEDs are lighting it mainly. And you can see it consists of many rings. If I get closer to the center, these rings will merge to one big ring just like this. So I also have a different array. This would be my sphere that consists out of these two um, half spheres, just a bit smaller. And on the top here and here I've inserted some additional neodymium disc magnets of opposite polarity and I'll show you what this looks like under the field viewer. I hope the camera gets sharp again. Yep, now it's in focus. And this is the side view of it. As you can see in the center lines form differently and on the top here we also get this ring consisting out of many rings. On the other side field is different because I've inserted the magnet in a different orientation and you can see how it yeah how the field forms 
how these white lines align. If I get out here, you can see this even more clearly. So, basically what I wanted to show you also is, I hope I can get this on camera with one hand. What I'm going to do now is I will take my camera flashlight from my phone and so I have just one single light source and I hold the viewer like this and then I take the magnet underneath and as you can see we get just one bright ring compared to many because now we only have one single light source. So this is the side view and this is basically what a ferro cell would look like with just one light source. Let's get this right here. As you can see if I move my light source around also this white line changes. And oops, turned it off. Sorry. Let me turn it on again. Right now, I will flip the magnet like this again. And as you can see, the angle from where the light comes also influences this white line from where it appears. So, in comparison, I will turn on. LEDs again and hopefully the camera gets sharp again if it wants to focus. Yeah. Still has its problems with focusing, sorry for that. I don't know why it doesn't get sharp. <laughs> yeah. Anyways you've seen it before so I think I have to view it from here so as you can see with multiple light sources you get multiple lines and it is all just dependent from where the light comes in but obviously of course the magnetism itself bends the light in the shape that you see here. So therefore the lines bend accordingly to the magnetic and dielectric field. And yeah, like this you can make a relatively cheap replacement for a ferro cell. I mean a ferro cell is also not that expensive to build. It's just the optical flat glass that is kind of expensive. But the field viewer itself that you see here costs around I think 20 euros and yeah the holder is just 3D printed and an LED strip is also very inexpensive and that is all you need and for yeah around 40 euros or so you can build yourself such a field viewer and if you want me to explain how to build this yeah you can ask and I think that's it for now. I hope this cleared things up for some people a bit that asked me why I don't use a ferrocell. <laughs> so thanks for watching and goodbye.